Hi, I'm Claire and this is my February and March 2017 book haul, which I think we can officially subtitle Claire should really film book hauls more often because there are too many books. <laughs> too many books in this one video. I've got six books to show you that I received from publishers or that I picked up at publisher events and five that I bought for myself. So let's get started because it's going to be a long one. The first book that I received was Silence Fallen by Patricia Briggs and this is an Orbit Books title. It looks like urban fantasy to me. The sell sheet that came with this says it's about a girl called Mercy Thompson who is a coyote shapeshifter and she is attacked and abducted in her home territory. She has to fight off a crazed werewolf to escape, only to find herself alone in the heart of Europe, without money, without clothing, and on the run from the clutches of one of the most powerful vampires in the world. So urban fantasy indeed, this is the new Mercy Thompson book. I'm assuming it's in a series from the way that the sell sheet talks about it. And there is a pull quote in the front from Charlene Harris who wrote the Suki Stackhouse novels and says, I love these books. I personally haven't read any of the other books in the series, so I probably won't get to this anytime soon. The next book that I got was Sins of Empire by Brian McClellan and this is also an Orbit Books title. Now as you can see this one had a little printing mishap, there's a bit of the spine on the front and it's missing a bit of the illustration, but the insides of a book is what really matters and those are fine so I'm quite happy and it's good to know that uh, the wonky books get a use as well and even if they can't be put up on shelves to sell to people they can still be read and enjoyed. This one is the first in a new epic fantasy series but if you're already a fan of Brian McClellan you might be excited to hear that it is set in the same world as his Powder Mage series so if you've read that you can keep on going with the same world building. And it is about the nation of Fatrasta, a haven for criminals, rebels, adventurers, and sorcerers seeking relics of the past, which sounds really, really great to me. There is insurrection brewing. Only the iron will of the Lady Chancellor can hold the capital city of Landfall together. And there is also a power, an ancient power as old as time rising and the fate of the whole nation is now resting in the hands of a spy, a disgraced war hero, and a mercenary general with a turbulent past. So all in all a pretty epic sounding premise for this new epic fantasy series by Brian McClellan. And now for the final book that Orbit sent me in the past few months one that really really made me squee when I opened the parcel and that is The Boy on the Bridge by M. R. Carey which is his new novel set in the same world as The Girl with All the Gifts which I absolutely absolutely adored. I loved the book, I loved the film, I just really really enjoy the universe that M. R. Carey created and I think it's such a clever and fresh take on something that a lot of people believe is a bit played out in the genre but that I still absolutely absolutely love in much the same way as the marketing around the girl with all the gifts was quite vague when the book first came out. The sell sheet for this doesn't really say what the book is about so I'm going to try and preserve a little bit of a spoiler free thing. It says here on the sell sheet once upon a time in a land blighted by terror there was a very clever boy. The people thought the boy could save them so they opened their gates and sent him out into the world to where the monsters lived. So this is quite exciting. From the way that the boy is talked about I'm assuming he is the same kind of character as Melanie was in The Girl with All the Gifts. I'm going to stop talking about this book now before I end up saying something spoilery by mistake but I am so excited to have this in my hands right now. It comes out on the 4th of May and I cannot wait to get stuck in. Next, I've got another May 2017 release, The Guns Above by Robin Bennis. I got this book in the mail from the lovely people at Tor and it looks so steampunky. I am really, really very excited. The tagline here says lean in and fire at will and it also says it is a signal airship novel so I am immediately 
right there for this book. It sounds really, really great. We follow our protagonist, Josette Dupré, who is the first ever female airship captain in the Corps, and she has to contend with a lot of things. She is not only patrolling the front lines, but she also has a crew who doubts her expertise and an airship that's kind of falling apart at the edges. On top of that, the higher-ups have assigned her this guy to watch over everything that she does and make sure that she doesn't make any mistakes and catalogue every single one of her mistakes. And he happens to be really annoying and an outrageous flirt. I'm sure we can all see where this is going. I also got with the book this super cute little page that is basically telegrams from within the world of the book about having a woman promoted to the rank of senior lieutenant in his royal majesty's aerial signal corps and basically characters commenting on it at some point she is of course referred to as a brazen hussy and a schoolgirl because <sighs> the world is terrible and we have uh, characters from inside the book commenting on this. There's different inks and different end writings so I'm sure once you've read the book you can kind of figure out who did what. It's just light and fun and makes you want to engage with the book. There's too much to read out to you now but I think I'll uh, try and post some pictures of it on Instagram because it is really quite funny. And finally, the last book that I was sent by a publisher in the last couple months, and probably the most bedazzled book I was ever sent by a publisher, is Spaceman of Bohemia. This is by Yaroslav Kalfar. Not only does it have these cool purple sprayed edges, it also has actual shiny bits in the cover. I don't know if you can see, but these are like actual little mirrory crystally bits that are inside the cover and not a little foil overlay. This is really beautifully put together so well done to Scepter Books. And the book itself is set in the near future. It is about a Czech astronaut who launches into space for a mission to investigate a mysterious dust cloud around Venus. It is basically a suicide mission, it's sponsored by the Czech government, and suddenly this astronaut Jakob becomes a world celebrity and he has to struggle with things like his marriage breaking down and his sanity being called into question. And here's the kicker, after his mission is derailed, he must make a violent decision which forces him to come to term with his family's dark political past. So this one sounds super interesting to me as well as looking really really pretty and I'm definitely putting it straight into my TBR pile and hopefully I can get to it at some point soon. Next I've got Gem Signs by Stephanie Salter and this one I picked up at a bookish event in London where they had a table of books that you could pick from once you'd paid your entrance fee. And I was super excited to pick up this one because I've heard Stephanie Salter talk on panels before, I follow her on Twitter, I was aware of her book series Revolution, this is the first book, but I had never really picked it up and there are so many new releases it's sometimes hard to remember to pick up some um, slightly older books. It feels weird to call this older because I'm sure it came out in the last five years so it's not like it's ancient or anything. But it is a bit of a post-apocalyptic book. It's set in a world that's been ravaged by something called the Syndrome for years and years and years and now genetic engineering has just become a thing that happens on a very regular basis because the world needs it and couldn't survive without it and I don't know much more about it, just I've been wanting to read it and never remembered to get myself a copy and now I have one, so another one for the TBR pile. And now onto the books that I bought for myself this month. The first two were for Sisterhood of the Travelling Paperbacks, which is a book club podcast I do with Kay and Chelsea. I don't buy every single book for the podcast in a paper copy. I get a lot of them on my Kindle, particularly if they're available at the library on Overdrive, 
but a few of them I end up buying as a paper copy. The first one was The Graces by Laura Eve. This one we've already read and recorded a whole podcast about and I've also already talked about it in my wrap-up for last month so I don't want to talk about it anymore here. One thing that I will say though is that I got the British edition because I was in the shop and it was there and I needed to read it kind of quickly for the podcast but if I'd had a bit more foresight, if I'd planned it a bit better, I would have definitely bought the US edition because I think it looks a lot nicer. Now, because I didn't love this book and I'm probably going to end up giving it away, it doesn't really matter, but you know, the US edition is very, very pretty. Next, I've got Last Call at the Nightshade Lounge by Paul Kruger, and this one is the next thing that we're reading. We haven't uh, recorded the podcast for it yet. That's going to be in a couple of weeks' time. I've only just got it in the mail. I haven't started reading it yet. All I know is it says here it's a novel of magic and mixology, which sounds delightful. The quick blurb in the back is demons are real, booze is magic, and a well-mixed cocktail is Chicago's only hope. And that just sounds delightful to me. I can't wait to get started with this one. I had not heard about this book at all, but it was Case Pick. And as opposed to me, the chump who picked the graces, Kay does not usually lead us astray, so I'm really excited to read this one. My next two books I picked up from the Big Green Bookshop in North London. They were on the display table. They looked really great. They are both by Katherine Johnson and they are Sawbones and Blade and Bone. They are in a series. This looks like middle grade and or young adult. The first book, Sawbones, is about uh, Victorian medicine, which is what grabbed my attention immediately because I really, really enjoy weird Victorian medicine facts and stories and things. I started researching Victorian medicine for a novel I was writing like five years ago and I'm still weirdly obsessed with it today. This book follows our protagonist Ezra McAdam who is an apprentice to a surgeon and he's learning how to do dissections and things like that. And we also follow Loveday Finch who is the daughter of a magician and her father has died in mysterious circumstances. She's now investigating those. And I presume Ezra and Loveday are probably going to have to team up and solve the mystery of her father's death and potentially some kind of bigger mystery involving grave robbing in London because it says here in the back medical science is flourishing and in London the illegal trade in corpses has never been more alive. And the second book, Blade and Bone, I picked up because it has a guillotine and a French flag in the front and so I immediately knew that it was probably set during the French Revolution and indeed here in the back it says, can Ezra escape the terror of the revolution? He has to hasten to France to find his missing friends, but revolutionary Paris is a dangerous place to be if you're English. These two both sound really, really good to me. They are also both under 250 pages, which I think can be quite good when you're used to reading these big, long, chunky sci-fi novels or epic fantasy novels. It's nice to have a brief either in a refresher or something a little bit shorter. And finally, last but certainly not least in this haul is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This is a book that I was super excited to read. It was on my most anticipated reads of 2017 video that I did in January. It is a book that was inspired by the Black Lives Matter movement. It has now been sitting at number one on the New York Times bestseller list for uh, a few weeks, I think, because it came out in America before it came out in the UK and I am so so excited to finally get stuck into this one. The book is about a girl called Star who has to kind of balance her life between two worlds. She was born and raised and still lives in quite a rough poor neighborhood but she goes to school at this like fancy posh high school in the suburbs and it's a bit of a difficult balancing act for her between these two places particularly when she witnesses the shooting of a friend of hers who was an unarmed young black boy who was shot by a white police officer 
and I mean I wish I could say that this was like a original premise but it actually is something that we hear about far too often uh, because it happens far too often. I think it'll be interesting to see a fictional account in a book as opposed to the <laughs> depressingly common um, reports you see on TV or in the newspapers. So that's it, this was the giant pile of books I acquired in February and March of 2017. I will try not to leave it to two months between book hauls next time because I end up with such a massive pile of books, but I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what the last book that you bought was and why you're super excited to read it. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check a recent video right here. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button on my face for more videos from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching and see you soon.